So your new bike's been delivered and you got it all assembled. You've done through all the checks, make sure everything's good on it. And now you're ready to do your break-in procedure for your engine. Well, we need to talk about a couple things first. Uh, first off, there's a lot of different methods for breaking in your engine. Uh, this is just my method. I have 50 years of motorcycle experience and this is in kind of combination with that and with knowing a motorcycle mechanic slash engine rebuilder and some of his recommendations and this is how I pretty much uh, break in my new engines. You can go buy some of it, all of it or none of it, it's up to you. But if you use this as a standard guideline, you probably won't go wrong. So. And the other thing is uh, oil. Um, I'm going to be referencing oil changes in this video. And if you haven't seen my oil change video on the KPR 200, then I'll put a link down in the description on uh, that video. And you'll need to watch that uh, if you've never changed the oil in this bike. And so anyway, um, oil. Really? The brand of oil doesn't really matter, whatever is your preference. Just make sure it's a motorcycle uh, specific oil uh, that's certified for a wet clutch application, motorcycle wet clutch application, and has the JASO MA slash MA2 certification. That oil will be sufficient for your wet clutch motorcycle. There's a difference between wet clutch and dry clutch. Uh, dry clutch is like what you would have on a, a car that sits on the outside of an engine. It has no oil whatsoever that gets to it. If it does, it'll slip. And with the uh, wet clutch application, uh, it sits in a bath of oil. And it needs that oil to help with the uh, operation of the clutch, keep it cool. And you want an oil that's specific for that. Uh, if you use like a regular car oil with the friction modifiers, it could possibly cause slippage in your clutch and you don't want that. So just be sure and get an oil that's motorcycle specific for wet clutch applications. Um, also in the owner's manual on this bike, it recommends 15W40, stick with that. Find a 15W40 motorcycle specific oil and you'll be fine. Okay, so let's get started with the procedure and the first thing you want to do is you want to run the bike through two idling heat cycles. So you want your bike upright. You could either do that by putting it on the center stand. If you have swing arm spools with a stand, you can put it on that so it sits on uh, the stand. Or you could simply just sit on the motorcycle and keep it level. But you start it up and you just let it idle and warm up, get to operating temperature. And once it gets nice and hot, go ahead and shut it off. Then you can put it on the side stand, get off of it, let it cool off for a while. And then once it gets cooled down, then you go ahead and start it back up and let it idle again until it gets fully warmed up and then you shut it off and then you let it sit for a little while and once it's warm but not hot um, you go ahead and drop the oil you don't have to change the filter and clean the screen at this point just drop the oil and fill the oil back up to the proper level then you're ready to do really your most critical part of your engine break-in. You want to do this for the first 35 miles. And in this procedure, the main thing is you want to keep the RPMs in the five to 7,000 range. Try not to get over 7,000 RPM for those first 35 miles. But you want your, your engine to stay in the power part of the engine. You don't want to lug your engine, so you want to ride your bike and shift your gears. Preferably find some place around town to where you're not maintaining high speeds, where you can run through your gears and uh, keep your RPMs up, but not above 7,000 RPM. 
So you want to run through the gears, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, as much as you can and keep the RPMs up and don't maintain any certain RPM. If it gets up to 7,000, shift it to where it comes down. As soon as it comes back up to 7,000, shift it again. And if you get to the point to where you're at six gear and it's maintaining, then drop it down, drop it down. And then every time you come to a stop or you slow down, you downshift. Don't pull the clutch in and coast to the, to the stop sign. You want to downshift and run those RPMs up every time. Say you're in fifth gear and you're coming to a stop and you drop it down to fourth gear and raise the RPMs back up. You gotta be careful though because you can run those RPMs way up if you're not uh, familiar with your motorcycle. So be real careful with that. But you wanna drop it down, you know, run it down up and then it'll sl start slowing down The RPMs will come down, drop it down to the next gear, the RPMs will come up, it'll slow down. Believe it or not, that is a very critical part of seating the rings that and the upshift both. The upshift and downshift is very critical for those first 35 miles. And just vary your throttle and do the upshifts and downshifts and then you'll be good for that. Once you hit your 35 miles, now for the next 65 miles, then up to 100, you want to um, try to keep it below the red line. Don't go up to past 9,000 RPM which is what Redline is on this KPR 200. Uh, keep it below that, no full throttle operation, and now you can get up onto the highway if you want to. No interstate riding yet, but you can get up onto the highway if you want. Try not to uh, maintain a steady throttle. You want to run through the gears. You can run through locally around town. You can do this locally or on the highway, but if you want to get the mileage in quicker, you can get up on the highway. 55 miles an hour would be fine, probably even 60, but you want to get up to the RPM and then uh, you can maintain it for just a little bit and then drop it down with just your throttle. Like if you're going down the highway and you're doing 55 miles an hour and you're, you're getting up there and, and the RPM shift to the next gear, um, but just main, maintain your throttle. You know what I'm saying? If you're running at, say, it's a 6,000 RPM and you're doing 55 miles an hour, then just back off a little bit every now and then to a slower speed and then speed back up and then back off a little bit and then speed back up. You don't want to sit there and maintain mile after mile at that certain RPM. You want to vary the throttle. And then once you have your 100 miles in, then you need to go ahead and do a complete oil change in it. Um, this, that's where this video that I made will come in handy. You want to drop your oil, you want to clean the screen and change the filter. In that video I show you which filter to buy for the KPR 200 so you want to be sure and watch that. But you do a complete oil change on it and then you really be uh, mindful of what's in the filter. Look at it. Make sure there's not a lot of metal. If there is a lot of metal then uh, you may have to change the oil one more time before this next step. But if everything's looking good, then for the next 400 miles, up to 500 miles, then you're pretty much broke in at 100 miles, but you want to let the engine fully break in. So you're probably 90% broke in at that point at 100 miles, but then you're, you, what you want to do in that period is try not to get into the red line at all. No full throttle operation or very limited full throttle operation. You can hit full throttle like if you're using your bike as a commuter bike and you're riding down the interstate, or not the interstate, the highway and you're doing 55 miles an hour on your way home and you gotta pass a car or something, you know, if you have to momentarily hit full throttle, it's not gonna harm it. But uh, you don't wanna do a lot of full throttle operation yet. But you don't really have a lot of limitations in this 100 to 500 mile range. You just want to keep it out of the red line and try not to do uh, very much full throttle operation. Once you hit 500 miles, then it's time to do another complete oil change. So you want to drop the oil again, clean the screen, and change the filter. After that's done, you're complete on your engine break-in. 
from that point on you can go two three thousand miles however you do it uh, between oil changes but now your bike's broke in okay I hope this was helpful uh, I have taken notice that uh, there are some ladies that uh, watch this video as well watch these videos as well and I may have neglected that so I usually say thanks guys for watching but I want to include them. I'm sorry if I left you out. So thank you guys and gals for watching. I appreciate your support. Thanks.